follow, they follow him. Unusual places for roaches to hide, huh? He went the same place, didn't he? Guys, we were getting ready to put the baby chicks in the building. I went to doing some digging around, getting the ground leveled up. And this little creature right here, big old male rat, just come jumped up on me. He was a rassle there for a while, but I finally took him down. He, uh, the, the inside of the building fared decent after it. It wasn't too good. I had a shovel and there's probably holes all in the walls and everything else, but... And Wanda was after a card. Wanda went to get a card to go in the camera or it would have all been on camera. Uh, but then I'd go to take and move the blower, this thing here, and it must have had over a hundred roaches in it. My chickens have just went berserk here. I've been dumping them out on the ground everywhere. I don't... This kind of stuff has never happened here before. I mean, we're just sitting here like, what is going on? Is is the pestilence is getting to be that bad? We don't believe in doing lots of poisoning and stuff, but it looks like we're fixing to start putting out some kind of poison for animals and creatures here. The uh, the chickens is having a blast, so maybe they're getting their omega threes in with their insects today. So we're gonna get back in. And we're going to try to see if we can't do a little bit more work and get it ready for the baby chicks. Said we're out here in our chicken building today. Uh, it's amazing how plans change. Juan and I had plans today to go to town, do a few things, pick up a few things, uh, pick up some soil for the greenhouse, work in the greenhouse a little bit, go work in the cabin. We got in town and went by the feed store to get the wood chips here. And they had, or to get to actually get the soil, and they had baby chicks. And... Oh, we've been going to order, you know, and I looked and I told Wanda, I said, look, these things are already a week old. We don't have to go through that shipment time. We don't have to go through the deal of trying to, you know, see if they're going to live or die. These things are already a week old. They done feathered out pretty good. I said, you know what, let's just buy here and bring them home. So we picked up a bag of the wood chips and we come home. Well, we get in here. We've had a old crippled chicken in this room here for about a year now. The other chickens are just abusive to her, so we put her in here. She's a good egg layer. She's got a bum leg. And we was like, man, this is our baby chick room. So we took her, put her in another pen, and I looked, and this room was in such, uh, a, such a mess. I told Wanda, I said, we can't put them baby chicks in there behind a, a chicken. So we've been spending the last two hours cleaning this room up, and then I realized They've scratched holes in here. They've messed this whole floor up on this ground in here. I told her, I says, you know what? We're going to just start fresh all over. I took the tractor down to the gravel pit. I graveled up a bucket of gravel and, and come in here, good clay gravel, and we spread it out on the ground in here. We've been kind of like raking it in level and, you know, packing it in good. And I told her, I said, now, we got some good clay gravel down on the ground. We're going to go back and we're going to put these wood chips on the ground here. Because that's, uh, that's going to give us something other for the baby chicks when they're on it to be able to uh, soak up some of the moisture from where they go to the bathroom and all that stuff. Now, we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be putting the baby chicks directly in the wood chips. What we're going to do, we have some, uh, we have some rabbit cages. And what we're going to do, we're going to take the rabbit cages and we're going to put the baby chicks in the rabbit cages and we're going to set the rabbit cages down on top of these wood chips here so that we can put them over here. And once they've been there for a while, we'll pick the cage up and actually move it over here and give that time to dry out some. And we can move it three times in this room here. That should be plenty ample enough time to give it time to dry out. And by the time we move it the third time, they should be big enough that um, we can just turn them loose in the room. 
One reason we're going to put them in the uh, rabbit cage with the little tiny holes in it is we just killed a giant rat in here. Now we, we had the rats gone. We hadn't had any rat problems in a long time. But I went to move a barrel and that joker jumped on me. But anyway, we eradicated the rat. And what we're thinking about is we put the baby chicks in the rabbit cage with the tiny holes in it. Then the rat can't get in the cage. Uh, any more rats couldn't get in there to get the rat, uh, chicken feed or the water or anything like that. And the little baby chicks will be protected from anything like that. So we're going to leave them in the cage for probably a couple of three weeks. And then we'll, they'll be big enough then we can just let them fend for themselves in the room here. Lots of people say that you shouldn't put wood chips down for baby chicks because they'll, they'll eat it and they'll die. I think uh, these was in wood chips in the place that we bought them. So my thinking is they're already used to it. They probably won't, uh, probably won't have a problem. The ones that was going to die probably already died. So we're going to just like get all this level in good. And we'll go out and get the cage in a minute and bring it in here. And we'll get the feeders and the waters and all that set up in it so that we can uh, get those babies in here and get them going. Alright, we're ready to start feeding our baby chicks. Now you'll learn if you use a bright red or a bright pink uh, scoop, chickens learn colors, especially reds and pinks and stuff like that. It makes them a lot easier to handle when they get older if they see these colors whenever they come in. Wanda can just walk out the door with this thing and her chickens just come from everywhere. They just run to it. And that's why they make these red. Now you can get them in galvanized. You just will get them in red because it's going to work a lot better. We're putting this chick starter in here. Now this is, I will tell you this, this is medicated. Where we live at here is so humid and so hot all the time till almost all the feed stores around here carry medicated feed like this for baby chicks. Just because of coccidiosis and all the other little viruses that they get, uh, it keeps them from getting it. And by the time this bag of feed is gone, it'll be out of their system anyway. By the time we get ready to feed them up to, get, to be egg layers. Because once this is gone, it'll be strictly uh, regular feed from that point forward. We're just trying to get them beyond uh, this point. Now these are not for eating, these are for egg laying. So that's why, that's why we're doing what we're doing. Two barrels here. We have a big barrel here. We leave our uh, laying pellets in this barrel. Now we use 22%. A lot of people use 16%. We go with 22. We found that 22, we get a consistency of eggs from 22%. 16 is actually the minimum that a chicken needs to survive on. So we give them the extra protein. And then the metal one down here we have, uh, this is to put our uh, chick starter in. And guys, we use these just simply for insect problems. We don't want rats and stuff. Now, a rat could chew through this plastic barrel, but all of our years of doing this, we've never had a rat chew into one of these plastic barrels. We use a metal garbage can just simply because we have them. And they work good for chick feeds and oyster shells and stuff like that. Helps us to keep our feed separated and keep it dry here in this humid climate that we live in. So we fix and start putting everything in, get the baby chicks ready to go. Okay, we've got them in this little cardboard box here. We've got a bread tray over top of them and keep plenty of air. Now they're calm right now, but they're fixing to go ballistic on me. <laughs> I'm gonna be taking them out one at a time, putting them over here. And these are 100% pullets. That's what we bought. We normally do the ISA Browns, but this time, we opted out of the ISAs, even though they're a proven breed for us, they're a hybrid. We went with the good old trusted Rhode Island Reds, simply because if we want something that will reproduce, should this situation we're facing in our country, we not be able to get any more chickens in the future. We've got a chicken here that can reproduce its own kind. That's what we're thinking at this time. Now, like I told you, these have already feathered out. We didn't have to go through the process of getting them to this point. So that's one thing we're excited about. We didn't have shipping death and 
all that stuff to contend with. These are already almost a week old, so we're going to go ahead and start moving them one by one. I had to choose baby chicks that weren't really aggressive. I wanted calmer ones. Now, I might have missed one every so often. And I might have got one that was really aggressive because certain traits I try to we try to keep out of our chickens. I try to, to make sure I pick the calmest ones I could out of the batch. You can see how they're not going ballistic. When you go to pick baby chicks, that's what you want to do. You want to try to pick the ones that are the calmest. You don't want to be picking up chickens that's running around squawking, carrying on going bananas on you. There we go. They'll figure it out. They're not. They're still just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. They'll be fine. They feathered out good. They feathered out really nice. See, that one's already found the feed over there. They already know it's there. Don't take them long. Once one sees it, they'll all do it. Plus they hear the other hen cackling in the background, so that probably... Yeah, see, they're already going to town with it. We actually only wanted 12, but we got 15 of them. Just in case, you know, we lost one or two, uh, we'd still have our 12. You see, it didn't take them long. They're typical chickens, they're gonna get up on something. 